came back to an armor, which is where he's from originally. Oh, that's where he's from originally. Okay. But uh, I think he's at CMU again this summer. So hopefully, you know, more cool middle of Michigan tournaments. Not only the Southeast Michigan hogging all the good stuff. Yep. All right, going in. So we're starting off on Fountain here. This is like traditionally like a, a puff counter pick, isn't it? It is. It is. So I, uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, they struck here first. I think Tran maybe just wanted to get it out of the way. Uh, yeah, right maybe. Away. Uh, uh, I heard that's a strategy with a lot of melee players. You know, just get the get the worst counter pick stage out of the way first. Yeah. Uh, Besides Dreamland, of yeah, course. So but the the high ceiling and the sort of small stage area makes it a lot better for puff. Harder to kill and harder to laser camp. Definitely. And uh, despite the the uh, stage being higher here, the ceiling, it's it Fox can still kill. Relatively oh. easily. It, it's Fox Puff, man. It's like the last character, second last character in the game against best up smash in the game. Yeah, so right. Do. <laughs> right. So we'll see what happens here. Um, yeah, so one, one thing of note, I always look at this the percents a lot of this matchup because when you're Fox and you're like 80, do you stop trying to laser them so you can't get up there up there anymore? Um, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I think it depends on the distance, like like the spacing uh, during that exact moment. But uh, like you were saying with the lasers, the lasers are so crucial here. I feel like since Puff dies so early, every laser just really matters here, as opposed to other matchups where Foxes like don't really care about lasering as much. But the lasers really do make a huge difference, I think, here yeah. in this matchup. Now, I've seen Crip take games from KJH actually before. So he definitely can, you know, I, I think he's sort of the, the favorite player just being the PR one, but Tran's been playing very cleanly so far. And Tran's tech skill is really, really good. It is. So when he's playing cleanly, it's like, it's not like he's like, you know, not messing up his wave shines, like he's not messing up his like, you know, up throw, single hit up air, ledge dash shine perfectly, like, shine out a shield, grounded shine out a shield. Tran has, he's a very technical fox, and he's showing it off here a bit. Has, also hasn't gotten rested. I know Crip loves rest setups. He's a very rest heavy. Player. I was just about to mention that. Yeah, Crip, Crip definitely rest heavy. But uh, I think he's just you know he's trying to feel Tran out, kind of like trying to download a little information about him, see how he's playing today. And then uh, I think as the set goes on, he gets more comfortable. He might let those uh, rest uh, rip. Yeah, he, he loves the the mix up where you up throw on the platform, and then you up there so they can't tech, and then they miss the tech because they try to tech last time. Oh yeah. Free rest after that. Oh yeah. I've seen him do the up throw side B thing that H box started doing you know like six months ago maybe. Or I guess at Evo's when he's really brought it out. He got so much mileage off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Crib definitely has a plethora of uh, like rest setups in his repertoire, I noticed. So it definitely uh, makes his rest game a little yeah. easier to get. Ooh. He's one of the puffs who gives Puff a good name as a character. And he's not he's not just going to back air your face. For no, he's not He's not going to like ledge camp and playing this. He like, Crip wants to get in your face. He wants to play aggressive. And uh, I respect that a lot as uh, as a character that favors playing super defensively, he'll just he just says no. I like to I like to go in. So yeah, I mean, and Puff has good tools to do so as well. Like he he sort of forces you in the corner and then just uses Puff's superior you know air mobility to keep you there. Yeah, get a lot of damage. Yeah, but it, it seems like you know when Crip gets these hits, he's doing pretty well. But Tran is just not getting hit that much. He's playing you know the neutral game so well. Again, up he's not up missing up throw up Yeah, he's definitely he's consistently hitting his tech skill and he's consistently killing puff off, uh, puff off that up throw up air. Yeah. I, I, that, that was not a single hit, so you could have smashed you out of it, but it's pretty hard to smash you out of the up throw up air. Uh, for sure. So now, like, now uh, Tran, like, one game one on Fountain, so, like, the advantage is, like, he can ban Dreamland, and then if Crip wants to go back there, he's like, all right, I kind of, like, I kind of... Like, you know, he's like, I already sure. beat you. I beat you on your counter pick. You want to go back? Like, <laughs> so... It kind of puts... Uh, Crip in the corner here, so they switches to battlefield instead. Okay, interesting stage selection. I'm not really sure. It's like one of the more neutral stages in the matchup. I feel. Yeah, it is. So, I I wouldn't say it's a bad counter pick, but it's definitely not like a traditional like like I would have counter picked somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, in the end, you definitely ban Dreamland as the fox here. So it's like, do you you have the, it's like you said, you have to go back to Fountain or you choose this stage. Yeah, like yeah, that, like, so that's the advantage of uh, Train winning game one. So I think Crip was just thinking, hey, let's try something different here because game one was uh, a little rough. Ooh, and that was like one of the earlier kills to wrap up there. It was like at 58 when he started it. That was yeah, it was really quick. And Train is just, just like so good at immediately getting that up throw after yep. the uh, uh, up air after the up throw. Excuse me. He knows his percents too. He does. He's very cognizant of that. Yeah, it, it looks so hard for Crip actually. Even though Tran isn't like laser camping, the way he sort of just sits there and back airs all your approaches looks so brutal. Yeah, and I think a lot of people watch Smash and they watch Hungry Box just like demolish all these foxes. But the matchup's actually really, really hard for Puff. Like Puff has to work really hard to beat Fox. Yeah, like when you watch Hungry Box, the reason he's so good is because he's getting so many hard reads. Like all his neutral wins are off him just reading the fox. 
And if you just plot up play like standard and safe, don't do any you know reads, you're never gonna win as well. No, you you have to. It's it's a very very risky character you have to play. But I mean, yeah. and the thing is when you, that, when you do go for these reads and you mess them up, Fox gets so much mileage because of his kill moves. Yes. So I mean, it's it's high risk, high reward type of character, and then Crip definitely exa uh, plays that style. As oh well. yeah, definitely. I mean, like the rest is the ultimate high risk, high reward <laughs> move because you, you hit it and they're dead, and you miss it and you're dead, especially against Fox. Some characters can't punish it that well, but Fox not one of those characters. I like these uh, pivot up uh, up tilts like. Uh, Tran is throwing out. It's definitely threatening because like Puff tries to come up like you know from on top uh, out of the air, and Tran's going, "Hey, come on, come up, uh, come up on top of me. I'll just up there, or I'll up tilt you." <laughs> yep. Definitely, yeah. ma definitely making Crips life hard here. Tran actually looks so good at this matchup. He does. I don't know how often he plays it, but he seems to be like know all the percents, know how to play neutral, know how to punish correctly, knows when to laser and also when not to laser, which is very important. Exactly. That's huge because like we were talking earlier, if you laser too close to Puff, Puff can come in and like hit you with a back air or get a grab on you, and then it's like you're in deep trouble. So like he's very cognizant of yeah, like you said, when I can and when I cannot laser. Yeah. He's very willing to you know throw at the laser than just stop and sit there, ready to back air, ready to down tilt, ready to react to Puff's approaches. Yeah, we, we just haven't seen Crip, you know, hit any rest, hitting good grab combos, even get many good edge guards. He's only gotten a few kills this set, and they're all just like, you know, back him at 100%. Yeah, it seems like Crip's having a hard time getting his foot in. It's because Tran's playing such a good defensive game, you know, and, and he knows when to be offensive as well, so. Ooh. Racking up percent with those lasers there. It really, really hurts Puff. Crip trying to work his way in here. Miss forward smash. He, okay, he's like at upper upper percent now though. A yeah. grab could end this this set. A, a grab could end the set, especially at 62%. So. Oh. Oh, good smash DI from Crip. Uh, Ooh, up trades. smash trade. Yeah. It's rough, man. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm sad to see my friend Crip, you know, lose. But it is. I'm excited to see Tran playing. So